So, hi, Antonik, how are you? Hi, Lenore. Hi. <laughs> I'm great, thank you. Yeah, so I'm joined today by Antranik. That's an unusual name. I've never heard it before. Mm -hmm. uh, an expert on strength, flexibility, and health. And it's uh, way uh, more relevant uh, for, for me and, and my colleagues who sing than, uh, than one might think. And so I just, I was looking up uh, online stuff to just improve my own health and my own body. The body is our singing instrument, so this is uh, important. And then I uh, came across um, your website. I actually have a, a funny anecdote why I came to your website of all. Mm -hmm. um, is because uh, I have a student, a 13-year-old, who um, is learning how to walk on, you know, on the rope. And I thought it was called tightrope walking, but today they don't call it that anymore. Uh, yeah, right? slack, slacklining. Slacklining. It's yeah. basically a tight rope used to be a very tight uh, wound up rope and the slack line is like a flat modern webbing. It's a flat webbing. Mm -hmm. So it is has a lot more slack, literally uh, more slack with it. Yeah, I mean, I, English is not my mother tongue, so I'm not really sure what that means, that it has more slack. Uh, it's more loose. It's more loose. It, uh, oh, okay. When you step on it, it's not like... So a, it's not as tight as the tight rope. Exactly. And why, why is it important that it's flat? Um, it's more comfortable. It's not that it's important. It's just uh, before, decades ago, we didn't even have the technology to make the, the webbing to make that kind of uh, flat cloth, uh, so mm -hmm. to speak. And uh, it's really... Oh, so it's like uh, high-tech stuff. It's high-tech. Uh, yeah, it's high tech. It's not high tech anymore, but it's high tech uh, for human history. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, climbers, climbers were using it um, as a as a way to help them climb. And then when they got mm -hmm. bored and they couldn't climb because of weather or something like that, they started mm -hmm. to put the, the, the webbing that they have from one end to the other and just try to walk on it to kill some time. <laughs> okay. And then that evolved into a sport. Yeah, so I mean, the reason I was looking up, uh, you know, tie rope, walking, that's what I was looking for before I figured that, that it was not called that, was that mm, my student was telling me uh, how he was learning posture. Um, mm. He was learning about posture as a preparation to walk on on that on the line and um i figured i i found that everything that he said was one to one what i'm trying to teach in my lessons mm -hmm. and what i need to do for for myself when i'm singing so i was like yeah i would like to to get an expert on that and, and talk about it a little bit that's very because i think that's fascinating I don't know anything about singing in general. I mean, I do it in the car alone, you know, with yeah. nobody else around. Mm -hmm. But um, I found it very interesting that posture is very related to singing. I had no idea. And oh, yeah. Flat, and slacklining particularly. I mean, whenever you're slacklining, you don't want to be hunched forward. Either you have to be upright and you shouldn't be looking down. Uh, you should be looking ahead because people will look down at the line. But the line is moving. Oh. So if you, oh, okay. So if it's move, you're looking at something moving, you will lose your balance. Right. So, it's good to look so you forward. don't, you don't even look like. I mean, it, it, when I do yoga poses, for example, that need balance, then they say just look diagonally forward a second. But you are supposed to look a little bit. You can look a little down, down but you know when you start slacklining, people will. We'll put their arms up and stand, and mm. but they'll be looking straight down at their feet. Okay. Uh, yeah, that doesn't uh, sound that like doesn't, a good idea. Yeah, exactly. And uh, in slacklining, the arms are tend to be up, which also reinforces good posture because yeah. a lot of times people don't have the movement here. They lose the movement in this range, especially when people get the shoulders. Older. You mean? Yeah, just moving the arms up. Hmm. Yeah. 
So, so okay, so you just, you basically put your arms up and as you're trying to balance on the line, you, I, I saw that in one of your videos. Yeah. You just let your arms freely move around. Yeah, your arms act like a tail. So hmm. if you're falling to the one side, your arms are gonna react and go to that side until that becomes automatic. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that. But do you eventually, do you eventually, are you eventually supposed to do it without the hands up? Um, it takes a long time to do it without the hands up. It, it's a, I would say it's pretty advanced to be able to walk with the hands down. It's, it's yeah. very, it's difficult. I do it and it's very difficult but it took me a long time to do it. So most yeah. of the time, if you see anyone on the cycline, their arms, both arms are usually up. Okay. I want to talk more about this because it is really, really good. But um, I'm just curious how you came to do this interesting combination that you have on your channel. So you have the slacklining, you have yoga, mm -hmm. you have some workouts, um, and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Of, Stuff and it's really yeah it's a really um, unique combination that I've not seen anywhere uh, else well you know I, I live in Los Angeles and yoga is huge here everyone does yoga like the past uh, 15 years probably yoga is very popular right I'm sure it's mm. like that in Europe too it's popular everywhere yeah it's popular everywhere yeah. mm -hmm. and in Southern California especially and so I discovered yoga, I was very, I've always been active and uh, very active, but I discovered yoga maybe uh, 10 years ago, I started to get serious into it. Mm -hmm. And I discovered it was just an amazing practice overall. And then I discovered a place called Muscle Beach in, uh, in LA, where mm -hmm. it's just like an outdoor playground on the beach with, for adults uh, yeah. who has, you know, rings and parallel bars and pull-up bars and climbing rope and you're out in the sun and there's a grass area you can stretch and do yoga or anything you want. And the whole vibe was so liberating and free and everybody going there was very health oriented as well, very like-minded individuals. And they're doing not just yoga, but acro yoga, which is like partner yoga. And oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and I was, and so when I discovered this area, I was almost enlightened because like <laughs> I discovered a whole new world of body weight exercises with not just yoga, but gymnastics, strength training, and um, slack lining and everything in between mm -hmm. so I started it really it really transformed my life because it included everything that I had been missing I, I didn't know I was missing you know going to mm -hmm. a yoga studio is great but doing it out in the sun in the open and putting on some headphones and not paying attention to anyone else is just fantastic you know you could do that and at the same time being with everybody yeah, and there's a community. So that was the big thing. You know, you go, if you live in the city, there's, it's hard to find a place where you can go and meet people naturally. But over there, you would go and you start to see the, pe the same people over and over and you start to mm -hmm. learn their names and, yeah. and, and they learn your name. And then you don't even have to say, hey, I'm going to go. Are you going? You just go and people are there or they're not there and you interact and you become friends over time. Yeah. And there was nothing like that I've ever experienced in L.A. I grew up in L.A. and it's a big city. Mm. You know? There's no central community aspect like that. Sure, you have your friends, you go to friends' homes, but to go to a park, to the beach specifically and have a place like that where – it's not just like-minded individuals, but they are all health-oriented for movement. Yeah. And so that really was what changed my life. And I got obsessed with that, you know, <laughs> with, in a, which is a good... With how good it feels. Good, huh? good obsession, yeah. And I, 
I, right now, I made it my life's goal to share everything that I learn through all this practice with other people. So whether it's yeah. yoga, yoga or a stretch or uh, something to do with getting stronger or posture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, and funny yeah. thing with posture, anytime we mention posture, like what happens naturally, I've noticed this, is if I hear someone talking about postures, I will naturally fix my posture. <laughs> just because, just by talking about it, you, yeah. you fix it. Just, yeah, exactly. Isn't that interesting? You've probably noticed that yeah. too when you... Yeah, you know, but I actually encourage uh, my students to just think about a certain element of the posture uh, instead of trying to do it. Because if you're trying to fix something actively, then you do it with muscle tension. Yeah. Whereas yeah. when you just think about it, then the brain will do what's necessary. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, okay, now you just uh, put put your chin a little bit lower. Then you know pe people will just push their head down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. But if you just say, okay, just think that the chin is looking a little bit down, but don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I would think that the, the, the shoulder blades are closer together in the back. I'm just thinking about it. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you, if you go through a certain process where you've felt it before, like what, it, what it's like to have good posture, then it's, of course, easier even to go back to it just by remembering yeah. uh, the what it was like. So a simple thing I always share with people that they can do any, anywhere if their shoulders are tight is just to roll their shoulders. Like you can roll your shoulders forward, mm -hmm. up to your ears, and then back, and then down. And then that back and down is the final really good position. Right. So just, yeah. doing, oh, just that's good. doing that a few times alone is already very good. And then so that... Mm feels good and then it teaches them where is the good position to end up in yeah and then also you can do that uh, on hands and knees do that same motion with straight arms just mm. like, just like that but with straight arms uh-huh and then when you're in downward dog do that same thing do those same oh i've never done that in downward knees, dog same shoulder rolls in hand uh, on in downward dog with your elbows cool. straight, and you will feel your shoulders, your upper, um, your upper, uh, basically your neck and upper shoulders loosen and activate at the same time. It's not just loosening, mm. it's strengthening because there's a force against it with gravity. Mm. And so it, that's that, interesting for me. That's really interesting. So the balance between releasing and strengthening. Yeah, because it's not I, just stretching 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 is also strengthening uh, uh, oftentimes a tight muscle is also a weak muscle you know what i mean so if mm. it's strong in that full range it can also be flexible it's not they're not separate things so oftentimes people think they are separate yeah that's why uh, um, personal trainers when they know what they're talking about they will put uh, equal emphasis on stretching the muscles after you work them out, right? Yeah, so like you yeah, work yeah. up the muscles and then you have, you know, also have to stretch and, and relax the muscles. Otherwise you can cause damage to yourself. Yeah, it won't be damage. It's just you lose the flexibility over time if you don't work on it. Just like mm -hmm. anything else, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of people think that strength training, if you only if you if you get really strong you lose flexibility but it's not true uh, what people do is they get stronger 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 they just neglect flexibility training so they right. naturally just get less flexible when they think yeah. it's because they're getting stronger is that but you can do both <laughs> in a balanced way mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah so the they're like posture muscles right i don't really know a lot about that but i know that there are muscles that are responsible of just helping us keep straight yeah, yeah. And not like slouch and stuff 
Yes. And then there are other muscles who are supposed to be relaxed. So can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, the main muscles, yeah, there's a lot, numerous muscles involved with posture, but yeah, the sure. ma main ones are generally for your, the upper back is, is a big one. Hips too, hips too. Sometimes if people have very tight hips uh, and the hip is, uh, I can't show you, but if your butt is sticking out too much because your lower back is tight and your hip flexors Mm -hmm. uh, the front of your thighs are really tight. It affects it affects the up the shoulders as well. So so you will be arching basically, no? Yes, you'll yes. Be arching your back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and but the main the main when we think of posture is the upper back. If I had to say, uh, you know, when you look at young people, they are always like they're looking at their phones and their neck is like kind of like this now. They're like stuck yeah. in this position and the shoulders <laughs> are like this. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. the, best, the best way they could counter that is to strengthen their upper back. And the, I think everybody should be able to do at least one pull up. Okay. <laughs> And that is a very difficult thing for some people, but it's a good goal to to practice because if you can just do one pull up, because most people honestly can barely do one, right? Yeah, I can't. I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, it's hard, especially for women, but it's not impossible. It just takes more work for women and uh, right. more more commitment and perseverance. But imagine how strong your back will be if you can just do one one pull up. You know what I mean? You yeah, don't have sure. to do 20 pull-ups or anything, but um, that is How one. do you go about training for a pull-up? So like how, where do you start? Uh, if you have a pull-up bar at home. Um, if but you if don't I don't? Have, if you don't have a pull-up bar at home, you should get one. <laughs> <laughs> they okay, have those, noted. They, they, have those, uh, they have those $20 pull-up bars that you could put in the doorway that are very helpful because anytime you pass through you can either just hang mm -hmm. hanging is well very, that's really good hanging is very therapeutic alone so just that alone is very good and then the easiest way not the easiest way but the most common way is to jump up like or put a chair and mm -hmm. put your chin over the bar and then tighten up and slowly <coughs> slowly lower down as slowly as you can so you're okay. doing so you're doing a negative pull up you're, mm. not, you're not doing a pull up you're doing just the opposite action and right. by, by doing that over time you will be able to slow down how um, how slow you can go down eventually you'll find mm -hmm. that you can actually pause also and then pause and then cool. wow that, that looks like a long way to go but very doable it is doable. It's and it's very logical. And in the beginning, maybe it's like a free fall. Maybe it's like, maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's no control. If it's no no control, then just hang over. Don't even worry about pulling yourself down. Just put your chin over. Yeah. And just hang, uh, hold for as long as possible. Yeah. And that and another way are to do rows. I don't know if you, if you have access to a gym or. The people listening to this, there are machines for rowing that are very good, mm -hmm. and th those also help uh, strengthen these back muscles as well. Mm -hmm. Or um, go kayaking. Yeah, yeah, go kayaking. That works. And yoga doesn't use any pull-up bars or machines or weights, but there are so many actions that will that still strengthen the upper back. Like if you're in a, you know, like warrior one and your arms are yeah. up, right? The arms just being up or sometimes they say do this, you know? That's hard. Yeah, like it's, it, it builds up over time. If you do that for, you know, many times in a yoga session over and over, it builds up enough strength in that position yeah. to have good posture. Uh, being able to do a pull-up is just icing on the cake. <laughs> is that what you do? Is that what you focus on on your uh, yoga for posture video? Uh, 
for yoga, for posture, uh, I try to make it as well-rounded as possible. So it has e everything, a little bit of everything. There's no one mm. focus on only one. It's hard making a video for uh, the world when I make it for YouTube. You know, I'm sure you feel the same way where the mm. audience is, it could be anyone, right? Right. If, if you're teaching one person, you know exactly what they need and what they need to focus on. But if it's for everyone, it, I have to make it a little bit of everything usually to make it balanced. Yeah. And also somehow make it like a little process that they can go through like a little complete, I guess, complete training. And progressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm wondering about the connection between yoga and slacklining. Is there a connection? Um, the first thing that, that's a good, interesting question. Breathing is very important. Uh, you have to be breathing consistently on the slackline. And then the other thing that comes to mind is uh, tree pose. <laughs> tree pose, like a tree pose where you're standing on one leg. Okay. You know the easiest way to oh actually, the tree pose yeah. It, the easiest way to balance or to learn how to balance on a slack line without a slack line mm -hmm. is to just stand on one leg, put your arms up, yeah, and close your eyes. This Ooh. is actually really <laughs> hard. And yeah, I, I, even me, I'm. You know, everyone at home could try this probably right now is to just stand on one leg, put your yeah, arms do it, up, do it, do it. I'm sitting down. Maybe I can stand up for a minute. Maybe you can. I just want to try it. Okay, let's, <clears throat> mm -hmm. let's see if I can do that. Okay. So, yeah. stand on one leg. Stand on one leg. Your arms <laughs> Already up. not uh, not the best, but okay. Uh -huh. And close my eyes. Holy, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's totally going to fall. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I cheated. I put my... Uh, foot, uh, foot down for a second. But now, okay, getting uh -huh. a bit easier. And relax your yeah, shoulders. Yeah, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And relax the shoulders too. Yeah, oh. so if you're like if you're like this, it's, it's not optimal. If you just mm. relax, relax them a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And okay, you see, so you see feel free really... to move the hands around. Sure. <laughs> Okay. You see, yeah, then we have to work on that. It's very deceiving. You would think it's easy, but it's actually be hard. You no, to... it's not easy. No, yeah. it's not easy at all. And if you learn how to do that, um, if you learn how to do that with your eyes closed, when you try to slackline, it's the very, it's very similar. It's a very mm -hmm. similar process, and it's fun. It's fun. I mean, you could set a timer, make a goal for ten seconds. I'm not gonna put the foot down for ten seconds let's say, and then make it 20 seconds, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a good one. It's a fun goal. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm. So balance and yeah, what was the yeah. other one? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I assume. And the breathing. And the breathing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I suppose that, you know, in general, posture is very important in yoga and, and you said that it's also important in slack lying. Yeah. And yeah. what what is it with uh, I want to know about singing how it relates yeah. to uh, what what is like yeah wh why is that important one, no, what singing. is the number one issue people have that the posture will impede the the, the voice I yeah so that I was I was gonna actually say um, that w when you have good posture ideally mm -hmm. and you see that on on most singers that sing well. Um, is that they have relaxed shoulders and they have long straight necks, yeah? And in general, the upper part of the body is relaxed and the spine is just, you know, relaxed and straight. Um, what that does is that it basically enables the air to flow properly because you have the, the air pipe, the trachea, and then you have on top of that, you have the voice box, the larynx. And it's Part, basically, it's part of where the air is coming through. The vocal cords then close. The vocal cords are in the voice box. They close, and then the air is going through them. So uh -huh. imagine what would happen if your neck was not straight, yeah? If, for example, you were 
pushing your head forward, you're putting mm. pressure on the airway. I see. Yeah. Interesting. So, so it just makes it harder. Mm-hmm. It makes it harder uh, to manage the, the breath, and it makes it harder to make the sound because there is pressure on the larynx, uh, and the pressure on the larynx can come from many different angles. Because I'm sure you know that the muscles are connected, you know, to the group of muscles that is next to them. So if you have jaw tension, chances are you're going to have throat muscle tension mm. and back of the neck tension mm-hmm. and shoulder tension. I see. And yeah, tongue yeah. tension. Uh-huh. Tongue tension. Uh, every, I never thought yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. Tension. But in yoga, they work on tongue, right? They, they have the lion pose. And, uh, That's yeah. right. <laughs> we did that. Is that, there's a reason for that. The reason for that because the must the tongue can get really tough, yeah, it can get really it's true. Um, tense and uh, and basically interfere with the with the airflow, yeah, and with the other muscles. That's very so, yeah, it's interesting to see like each each of us has like a main issue, like the the, the tension is generating from maybe from one part and not from the other, but eventually. Chances are, if you have tension in one part, you'll have tension in the other parts I as see. well. Uh, speaking so of, if you, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, speaking of the jaw tension, I have this video. Um, you could probably find it if you just type "jaw self massage" and my name, Antronic. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Ba- basically, I'm gonna you, do that. You have to lay on your stomach, and then you put one fist over the other. Okay. And, then, and then you just lay your, so you're laying on the floor and you have this, your hands like this, and then you lay uh, your head over your knuckles. And it, mm-hmm. you could feel the tension. It's not really strong right now because you're not laying down. When you lay down and you can just relax mm-hmm. your relax. entire head over it, it's a very powerful very powerful self-massage that is mm. very helpful for anyone who has like TMJ, which is a, can be very, uh, basically very tight uh, jaw muscles, which cause headaches and migraines and other issues. Mm. So I have a bit of that, yeah. Yeah, it's very helpful. And doing that in a yoga session is fantastic because sometimes yeah. uh, in the middle of the yoga session, you are laying on your stomach, right? Mm-hmm. So why not tell the class to do this jaw massage? Right. <laughs> right there. Right. There. It's also, I can imagine that, uh, I mean, I've experienced it, that if you're releasing certain parts of the body, most of us still need this, like a false sense of control. And then usually we'll choose a different muscle to tense. To tense up. While the others are, are relaxing. Absolutely. So sometimes it will help, you know, just thinking about the, the shoulders relaxing, for example, can help you release the jaw. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it will be the opposite. Yeah, you're right. Um, it could be, yeah, the body can compensate in some way or another. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were mentioning with the vocal cords and larynx. Uh, I remember the interesting thing. I don't know if this is entirely true. Maybe you know, but. I was reading that humans are one of the only animals that can die from choking because our vocal cords are much bigger, uh, our voice box is much bigger than other animals in general, and that's what gives it the, that's what- The vulnerability. uh, Vulnerability, yeah, and and what allows Mm. us to make complex sounds, but the drawback is there's less space for the food to go through, so. I, I, I don't know if it's ever, I don't know if humans are the only animal with that issue, but uh, I remember reading we were one of the only ones. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, that makes sense. I, I did not hear about that, but it makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the larynx is actually, the, it's like natural healthy function as a voice box is that it can move around a little bit, yeah? So if you don't, don't put pressure too much, yeah? But if you really... I've never tried. I've never tried yeah, to move this. Ever. You know where your Adam's apple is? Yes. Your Adam's apple is your larynx, yeah? Uh-huh. So for guys, it really sticks out a little bit. Uh-huh. So in for girls, it's just like, just the top of, of the... Mm-hmm. 
of the trachea of the air pipe. So really gently don't pressure on it, but just try to relax the, the jaw and the neck. And then you can, you see that you can move that side to side a little bit. Oh, really? Relaxing the jaw is very helpful. Yeah, you, you have to do that. Otherwise, it's difficult to move the larynx around. Uh, nice. And then when, yeah, when, when you sing in a healthy way, then, you know, that the, the larynx vibrates with it. And it should not be fixed, like it should not be fixed in one place. Mm -hmm. It should be able to tremble slightly. So, yeah, that, that, that means necessarily that it's vulnerable. Yeah, that's so interesting. That, yeah. Um, I, I don't, like I said, I don't have any singing experience, but singing is wonderful. I, there's been so many moments where I'm singing alone and I'm, my eyes are filling up with tears and I'm going to cry because I'm wow. feeling so, I guess, emotional. I don't know. It's not, there's mm. no, there's no thoughts about it. It's just, it's, that's what's happening. And mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing. I don't know. Does that happen to you? you, you sing yeah, it? of course. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Yeah. 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 And I saw. I have sometimes, I have uh, students who have emotional moments yeah. in, in the lesson because it's, uh, it could be overwhelming when your body is, you know, is open and you have vibrations going through your body. I mean, can, do you have anything more intimate than that? Yeah, it is very in intimate is a good word for it. And I saw that video of you doing uh, singing and doing yoga at the same time. So every time you you inhale and then on the exhale, you are singing and your voice sounds amazing. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, yeah, your voice sounds it's amazing true. already, but like, wow, I never seen such a thing. And then you have one in pigeon pose and... Uh, that's so yeah. interesting how you're singing while doing yoga. That's what, that must be very unique. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, so unique, but um, the, I, I wrote an article about it and how yoga and, and singing are so connected and why singers have to do yoga. And it's really everything that yoga is working on is beneficial for singing. It's, it's the posture, it's the breathing, it's the movement. I want to talk to you about that a little bit too. Um, like just keep moving, not, not being stiff. This is so critical mm. to get a free sound. And, you know, I, I trained for years, but if I sing while doing yoga, I, I feel like I can sing anything. Wow. That is very cool. Yeah. I wish I could do that all the time. Did you write that on your website? Is it on yeah. sing singwell.eu? Yeah, okay. it's on singwell.eu and there on the top of the website you have voice tips and there you have all the articles. Uh, you can also do a search for yoga. Okay. I also wrote something about sports, why sports is really important for singers. So before we talk about the move me movement that I wanted, I wanted to ask you about yes. um, you know, being active. You said that you've always been active. Have you experienced uh, periods when you were lazy and you didn't want to do any sports? And if yes, how did you deal with that? And do you have um, advice for lazy people like me? Uh, that's a good question. So I've, when I was very young, I, did, I was not active. I was a computer nerd. Mm. And uh, when I became a teenager, I started to become more active. Um, but uh, that's a good question. I, I've always intrinsically had this motivation to do something. Yes. Um, and you really have to find what, what makes you feel alive and passionate uh, I, like I, I feel this certain high when I'm, mm. uh, let's say I'm riding my bike or going skiing or, you know, whatever it is, or going to a yoga class. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of these mm. things, I feel, I, I always feel better afterwards. And my body has, I've, I guess by association, my body just associates that these activities are good 
and so I should do them. <laughs> and if someone, not, and I don't think everyone has that experience yet. And but you have to find what sport or activity will help you find that freedom, so that mm -hmm. every time you do it, it could be tennis, it could be soccer, it could be. Uh, it could be anything. It could be your own, you know. It doesn't have to be workouts. Yeah, some people will just find that boring. But it, it could even just be juggling, you know. <laughs> I mean, that is also an interesting sport uh, with uh, movement and mind. It's using, it's using your brain. Uh, and balance. And balance, yeah. And it's a very skillful little thing that might and there's a lot going on so i find yeah. all these so find something you like something that yeah you that's have to fun find, for you yeah and i like variety so i don't like doing the same thing every day there are some things i do a lot but mm. i like variety and i like that over the years as your as my body has become more capable of doing things i can try other things like i can I go ice skating now once in a while. I never used to do I love that. ice skating. Never. I never, you know, but now because I have enough uh, enough cross training from other things that I can kind of do it and it's fun. So mm. you really have to find the what one or two things in the beginning that kind of stick to it, commit to it. If you're liking it, stick to it. A lot of people have issues with commitment. Um, you know, we live in this, this, this disposable society, right? We buy something and then we, we use it for a month and we throw it away because it's made so cheap. And uh, you, you, a, lot, a lot of things are disposable. And so that concept, I think people are applying it to not just physical things, but to relationships. You know, people are getting... Will, will not commit to a relationship. They just want to go from one to another to another. And then the same thing with exercise and your health. You have to, if you want to lose weight, you have to, if you want to do a diet, you have to stick to it for a few weeks or a, hmm. some, some sort of amount of time. Uh, not, just, not just a day, you know. Yeah. Nothing, and nothing expect more. results. Yeah, by the way. and so same thing with sports, You, I, I can't, or any activity. For me, yoga helped me find my freedom, like uh, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And if you, and I've noticed a lot of people don't like yoga or don't have a good experience of it from one, from trying it once or yeah. twice. And I find that you have to keep trying different teachers until you find a teacher that really that you love because mm. because there are so many different uh classes each teacher has a different style a different energy they say one says yeah. too, mu too much one says nothing you mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. yoga, and yoga is same goes for singing yeah i'm sure it's the same you it's just different different approaches and everybody is trying to get to the same place in in different ways <laughs> yeah exactly and when you find one that is really working with you you connect with them keep going to them you know yeah and you have to just really stick to it until that becomes part of your life where you feel like oh you have to do it like if i don't do that something's missing in my life you know mm -hmm. so yeah make it part of your life yeah so that's the that's a general tip i guess i would say to help yeah. someone stay committed or motivated cool yeah okay. So um, I wanted to ask you about, uh, I want to go a little bit to slacklining, because this is the thing that I know almost nothing about. Sure. But this student of mine said that just before you uh, step on the line, you need to basically put your, your body in order, okay, yes. so to speak. So uh, can, you, can you explain a little bit about what you have to do to prepare going on the line? Um. Yeah, that's an interesting cue. One of the first things 
uh, you, when you put into order, uh, it's not so much that you have to put into order, it's just more like you have to commit, again, it's a commitment thing. Don't think okay. that. And when you go up, you have to raise your arms up at the same time mm -hmm. um, to help you stand. And then looking forward. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of, when people are starting, they will stand and then before they even try to balance, they they know they're gonna fall, so they just fall before they even try to balance. Mm -hmm. So maybe they just give up. Yeah, they just give up. So you have to like fight for it, I think. Okay, um, that's interesting. You have to like really, yeah, because otherwise you won't make the pro you won't make progress. Again, it's that committed commitment thing, really. Is. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, th this is really, th that taps into what I experience in singing. And let me, let me explain what I mean. If you are going to make a sound, yeah, and you make a sound that you don't like it, and you go, like, no, no, nah. I was like, making a sound, oh, no, that was ugly, no, nah, no, nah. and then you start, you know, banging the head against the wall. Why is it ugly? I suck, blah, 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 and you just don't get to sing. Uh -huh. because you keep stopping yourself almost in advance, like you didn't even give it a chance. And it sounds a little bit like what you're saying, yeah? Interesting. And you have yeah, to fight for it. Exactly. You have yeah. to keep going somewhere, yes. yeah? You have to, I, I suppose, if you're trying to walk on the, on the line, you yeah. have to keep moving or you will fall, hmm. right? Yes. I, I, I consider this... So I consider slacklining and juggling and singing, I think so, is it's all what I consider skill work, like meaning it requires repetitive action frequently over and over and over mm -hmm. and over, not just once a month, not once a week, but like mm -hmm. every, every day a, a little bit to help Otherwise, otherwise, you won't make progress with it. You know what I yeah. mean? But because it's a muscle memory, because you have to basically yeah. make your body do stuff that it's not used to be doing. It's very, yeah, very refined work. It's very, it requires precision. It requires, mm -hmm. and, and that mind-body connection, I mean, the, men, the mental connection, the connections within your brain that help make that happen just it needs practice repetitive practice and it requires a lot of failure i say mm -hmm. failure because it's not failure you need to fail to get to the success yeah um, that's a good thing like, can you can you elaborate on that because this is exactly what i'm trying to 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 get to hmm. the, it's difficult to fail yeah it's yeah. very difficult mentally for people and i'm no different to you know try to do something and you know what you're supposed to do you know what the end goal is and of course you want to get there right away and you also understand that you have to practice but at, in the moment when you feel this is not working this is where you know you have to start to do a little bit of mental work yeah. So I I suggest you know reserve the judgment to after you you sung the phrase for example yeah sing the whole phrase after that you can think about okay what happened what did I do whatever yeah and make it a little bit more constructive but don't think during the singing like don't stop to think don't listen to the sound and say is it good or not good because then you basically stop the flow yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, what the, what would you what would you say you know to uh, yourself if hmm. you know if you fall for example off the of the line or like what would you say to your to your students? Um, uh, well, when I, if I'm keep teaching, them going. If I'm teaching a student, I will let's say they let's say they're doing something and they are just the second they 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 didn't succeed and then they mm -hmm. try the second time and they didn't succeed. I will, sh I, to them, they didn't succeed, but I can see that they, they were 1% better. Mm. You know what I mean? And 
Okay. And they and they don't notice that mm -hmm. because they are not even used to this action, whatever it is that we are doing. But I'm used to, I'm experienced. I have the vision for it. I and you will have the ear for it. You can right. hear, you can hear a little bit of a success to them. It's a mm -hmm. failure. Automatically, it's a failure. Yeah. But uh, I have, I I I guess I would tell them to. You know, another thing I, I say is you are the worst at something the first time you ever try it, right? The first mm -hmm. time you ever do anything, you're going to be terrible at it, no matter what it is, no matter if it's mm -hmm. sports, no matter if it's sex, no matter if it's whatever, you know? <laughs> it's just, it's not going to be good. It's going to be a whatever. It's going to be, a, and then it's going to get better over time, right? right. And... Uh, so consider the little improvements on the way don't yes you know the, don't the jump micro micro advancements yeah, yeah. don't uh, jump too much ahead because that's what i do for me personally like um like i'm working on handstand push-ups it's an advanced what uh, uh, push-up <laughs> in a ha handstand uh, okay. and it's a, it's advanced it's advanced and it's very difficult very difficult not easy at all not easy at all for me it was impossible for me last week uh, last mm -hmm. year last year it was impossible this year it's starting to become better every week and it really really felt like i mean really felt impossible but i could feel the i my tempo is improving my range is improving. There's like little little things that are improving, and I and I write them down because mm. it's such a gradual process. And then when you finally get to your goal, it's very easy to forget all those little struggles you went through. And so I like keeping a log of like how cool is that like i have a log an of like actual log of everything like how many i did any notes what i felt uh, how amazing it was and then when i go back when i go back like i have like so many pages now over the months i could see where i started you know and yeah keeping a log is very helpful because you you know what you you know you're progressing and even if you're at a plateau, oh, plateaus are very interesting. When you're like stuck somewhere and you're not mm. improving and you're not uh, regressing either, mm -hmm. psychologically it feels like you're regressing. But it feels like it's not success because you want to make improvements. Yeah. But but in actuality, anytime I have uh, anytime I have a plateau like that. I noticed in my log that if I take a break for a few days, then I have this huge jump up. You know what I mean? Hmm. But sometimes you just need a break. <laughs> sometimes a Yeah, break. I also find that yeah. sometimes if I take a break or if a student takes a break, it does them good. Yeah. Because you get a little bit out of your head. Yes, absolutely. I find that is very helpful. Um, of course, being consistent is important but sometimes oh and the other thing is if your motivation like i notice if my motivation toward the workout is not there i don't want to i don't want to do it at all that means that's a sign that i'm over training you mm. know what i mean i'm doing it too much mm. and that's one of those signs that internal motivation if it's really zero or just i don't want anything to do with it you have to respect those signals too. You can't, mm. for, you can't always just force and force. It's very helpful to take a break, step back, take a vacation from it, do something else. And mm -hmm. then when you go back to it, you're refreshed and you go, oh, like, I'm so good. Like, I'm actually really good. Like, you know, you, you forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You Revisit. Get, yeah but it's it's really cool that what you said about the uh, handstand uh push-ups yes that it began impossible yeah. you, you use the word impossible it was impossible of course but it yeah. was not actually impossible it just felt impossible or it was impossible at the time but that it was a temporary 
temporary thing. It required so a lot that's of really that's really interesting. So anyone there who's listening, yeah. if you think you know, if you think, oh, I can't sing, you know, maybe for now, mm -hmm. but in a year, it is just one year, right? It's not like you have to wait eternity to to see some significant. A change in yourself Honestly, and I, from my experience it's even less than a year week, every week yeah will yeah. Change. Every week. yeah absolutely yeah. so yeah impossible should not you know should not be the end of the story yeah, if something is impossible I was yeah. like okay now it's impossible but just you wait and especially when someone is starting out I'm sure it's the same way with singing is in the beginning every session you will have progress right yeah in yeah. the beginning it's like fast very fast because it's progress. new stuff and it's gonna like there's a lot to learn and change you like it's... blow you away yeah. right and then as you get more advanced more advanced more advanced and like higher levels it becomes really hard to make this, the same amount of progress the progress it's also a matter of expectations hmm. yeah. your standards go up yeah as you advance and yeah. then you want you know you want to achieve more and more and you also understand more of what you're supposed to achieve right and so if you know you know in your head you know that you're supposed to do abc but your body is still not trained enough to do that mm -hmm. successfully then that's going to create that dissonance and that frustration because the muscles, they learn slower than just, you know, the brain remembers. Right. Yeah, and it helps. So that could be very difficult. It helps to always go. I, I like to always remind myself of where I started <laughs> anytime I feel down. Because, mm -hmm. because you, it's, it's so easy to forget. Like, anytime you make a new achievement, that automatically becomes your new standard, right? In your yeah. head, oh, that's the new standard now, right? And then, that, exactly. then you make another achievement, that's your new standard. And then eventually you will plateau and then you feel, oh, you don't feel good about yourself. But you have to remember, mm -hmm. you came a very long way. And yeah. the, those, it's very helpful to remind yourself mm. of those things. One of my mentors once told me that progress is not a straight line. You know, the, mm -hmm. Progress is, is like going up and then a little bit down and then up again. Then down is like, it's, like it's, really, it's very curvy and bumpy way. It's like I say it's like breathing because you can't just keep inhaling. If Ooh. inhaling is progress, no, you can't. You have to... Like, you know, like... You yeah, know. wow, that's a good yeah. analogy. I like it. Yeah, like I... Yeah, you have to allow for a bit of, of downfall sometimes. Exactly. And that's also how you explore your own, in my case, your own voice, is by risking being terrible. Because if you don't, if you don't take that risk, you're not going to find anything new. You're yeah. only going to use what you're familiar with and then what's the point in learning? What's the point in improving if you're not going to do new things? Right. Yeah, so you have to, you know, just take that as a given. Sometimes it's going to be horrible. Yeah. Sometimes it's going to be just not as good, just how it is. But that's how you sort of like look for the right way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's, that's a very good way. Um, I say all of life is a cycle. Everything is cyclical. The sun rising, the moon, the, the moon rising, mm -hmm. uh, that setting, and this earth revolving around itself and around the sun. It's all cycles, right? And mm -hmm. the, everything has it goes up and down, up and down. Nothing is a straight line, just like you said. So it's very good to remind yourself of that. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, whenever times are really dark. Right, everything is really dip like if you're in depression, you're in, the, you feel like you're in the bottom, like rock bottom. That's usually the sign that very soon things are gonna start getting better really soon, <laughs> because because it, you can't go any further down. Like 
so mentally you will bottom out and, and you're in this dark cycle and you think it's only going to go lower and lower and lower and lower but really eventually you find yourself and mm -hmm. realize oh like no things are great <laughs> hopefully that, yeah this, mm -hmm. that process is a very psychological psychological process whenever things are down you have you have to persevere yeah 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 absolutely yeah. i i'm curious about something because you are such a, a physical person yeah you do all these things and you are in a great shape and i'm really jealous about that by the way uh do you sometimes like just imagine a scenario in a scenario where you're for example doing yoga and your breath is maximized and your body is really relaxed and you feel very open and very very good mm -hmm. do you find yourself sometimes um singing oh do i find myself like physically singing yeah, or maybe just, I don't know, making any sounds, or did you feel that need sometimes? Um, so sometimes, not, not, not often, like sometimes you, like in Downward Dog or something after a long sequence, and yeah, sometimes I'll just let out a sigh, like, ah, like mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. something like the shirt, I mean, that, those happen, but singing, no. I, I mean, personally, I haven't yeah. really tried. <laughs> yeah, you said that you, you don't really have a lot of experience with that. Yeah. But the, even the sigh, I mean, it's almost like a reflex, like we want to let out a sound. Yes. When, you know, when this channel is open, basically. Mm. Um, and yeah, I... I Maybe that's just my habit to sing. So if I feel good in my body, I just want to sing. Um, yeah, for me, it's really, it really goes hand in hand. And uh, I discovered the idea of doing yoga and singing at the same time came when I was uh, on a tour in, in Europe. And I had this routine every day that I would stretch. I wanted to, to do the splits. Never did, but I, I got really ahead yeah. in that. And um, I did a bit of, a, of the pigeon pose for that, you know, to just open the, the hip joints. Yeah. And, you know, all kinds of, of really like hardcore stretches that I'm not used to do at all. And it's really, it feels extreme, yeah, but yeah. really good. So I found that when, when I lose my hip joints, that really, that's really good for the breath. Mm. And it's really easy, much easier to release the upper part. And I just found myself like one day in the pigeon pose and just letting out, you know, the the top of my range, basically just singing high notes, like crazy high notes, because yeah. it, it also hurt a little bit. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a little bit like screaming, oh, I'm in pain, but in, <laughs> in a different way. I, I actually find myself doing that in pigeon pose, out of all poses. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it can be very intense. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do like, ah, something, something, <laughs> yes. so, so, something like that. Or, yeah. You know. So imagine if you had more airflow, you would be singing opera. That would be cool. That, <laughs> that's interesting. I'm going to try it next time on purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Try it. I'm gonna Why not? Try it. Just, just sing one of your favorite songs. Yeah. In the pigeon pose or something. Yeah, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, I find it absolutely fascinating that we come from so-called different uh, professions. Yeah. But it's just the same. It's the same thinking and a lot of the same principles. Yeah, there's a lot I think of. That's uh, really cool. A lot of the uh, there's a lot of wisdom in every in every. I guess specialty, but they a lot of them overlap. A lot of them. I find that mm -hmm. very like the concept of looking forward in cyclining mm -hmm. is the same in mount, mountain biking. When I'm riding my mountain bike oh. down a down a hill, I mean down a you know a steep 
downhill. If you look down, the world is going to rush too fast. The ground right. is like, it looks like you're going, it feels fast. But if you look ahead. You'll probably fall too. Yeah, because you cannot control, you cannot process speed that fast. And then, so, but if you look ahead, everything slows down. You're not going yeah. as fast. And so you And can, then you have more control. You have more control. You you don't feel like you're out of control, so your body feels in control. And then it's the same thing in surfing. When you're mm -hmm. surfing and you are looking at the sand as you are on the board and going, everything is mm -hmm. calm. Everything, yeah. You know? The, like yeah. All these concepts. That's amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. all these concepts are very... Um, I don't know, all these concepts are really related, honestly. Yeah. I think it has to do with with two things. It has to do with balance and it has to do with our will to control and how we don't know how to do that instinctively. <laughs> so we try to control by tensing up or by looking like it's just straight ahead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, if it's like just looking down on the on the um, slack line or or the bike, or if it's just holding something, you know, holding a certain muscle in the upper body when you sing because you're trying to make the voice or you're trying to have a sense of control of this area. But it's very difficult to control your voice when you have tension around your throat. Mm -hmm. Because then, again, then you don't have airflow, then you have pressure on your larynx. It's not really functioning in its most healthy way. So it's very difficult to control it like that. The way to control your voice is to lose control over your muscles. Hmm. And that's very counterintuitive for most people. Right. Yeah, a lot of people want always to be in control, right? Yeah. They want to go like, oh, I got it. And I, yeah, I was like that. Then it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not good. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's not yeah. good. Yeah. You have to let con let go of the control a little bit. Yeah. That's In a general. Good concept. Yeah. That's a very good concept. I think I, I want to finish with the just with the notion for all you know athletes slash yoga pra practitioners. I don't know how you say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, try to sing a little bit when you feel good with yourself, when you do yoga or when you do some sports and you're active. Like, try to let out some sounds and see how it feels. Uh -huh. And to the singers that are listening, I'm telling you, you have to be active. You have to be flexible. You do any of you know of the things that we mentioned, that would be great. Yeah, whatever you want. It could be even something else. It could be Pilates. It could be, yeah, anything that has to do with strength and flexibility. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, you, you need that. If you want to sing well, you need, you need this. You cannot do without it. Yeah, balance is very important. I think... That's one of that's always been one of my goals is to always be in balance, and mm -hmm. you know, it's tough. It's a lifelong process to find balance, but it's worth it because we are alive, yes. and in the meantime, right. we have to make the best of it, right? Absolutely, yeah. amen. Yeah, it's been uh, it's, it's been a great it's been great talking to you, honestly. Yeah, you too. Yeah, I really enjoy this. Yeah, maybe we could do this again in a future time, sure. Lenore. Yeah, this is great. I will. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like. I, I. I'm now curious about singing. Now I'm gonna try it next time in random yeah. times. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, I will. How, always, how you feel? How it feels? I've always wanted to get better at singing, and I always thought mm -hmm. it's uh, something I will learn much later in life when I have. T time and money to do that kind of a hobby because it's mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be a hobby extra hobby for me mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah it's, it's always yeah. curious yeah well maybe you don't have to wait maybe you can already do that next yeah. time you you do uh, what you do yeah there's so many things to experiment do experiment with it I and always... I'm definitely gonna check one of your courses because uh, 
I saw that you had something there with the hip joints, and I, I was raving about the hip joints before. Um, couldn't hurt, couldn't hurt. I'm also, you know, being a breastfeeding mom is not uh, helping. So yeah. <laughs> the hip joint, you always sit like in a bad posture. So no, it's not. Oh, good. I see. So if there are any breastfeeding moms there, you need to work on your hips. Hmm. Check out the course that um, uh, Antronik has. Yeah. About hip joints. Well, it's, yeah. uh, all right, Lenore, I will. Okay. Be clear have a it. fantastic day. I'm yeah. going to have a great evening. We're like on both sides of the world. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious. Enjoy everything uh, you do and enjoy singing and enjoy life. And I'm curious, uh, whoever watches this, please leave a comment. Let us know what you like, yeah. what, what you didn't like, all that good yeah, stuff. So that absolutely. We can, so it's not just us speaking between each other, but we're doing it for you, the listener, as well. So Yeah. And uh, tell us if you're going to try uh, singing while doing uh, any sports activity or if you're going to choose a, a physical activity, tell us what you're, what you're choosing. What's your poison? What's your poison? I like that. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.